Have you ever wondered which parts of your prompts are providing the most value and which parts of your prompt you can delete? There's an ocean of prompt engineering tips and tricks out there, but do you know which ones actually matter? In this video, I wanna share five essential elements of the prompt to help you get 80% of the results with 20% of the effort. I don't know if this is cool or embarrassing to say, but I've written thousands and maybe tens of thousands of prompts and I think I've cracked the prompt equation on effort in versus value out. So what are these five important items that make up high quality prompts that are very unlikely to change as the LLM ecosystem evolves? The five most important elements of the prompt are model, purpose, variables, examples, and the output. If you're writing prompts and you wanna get the most bang for your buck, some of this will be recapped, but I promise this elemental breakdown will help simplify and speed up your work with your prompts. This video is all about the 80-20 of incredible prompts. Let's get started. So let's look at five examples of these prompts, showcasing each element through a prompt. And then we'll look at two full concrete prompts a Nuxt view component and the Omnicomplete we've covered on the channel that utilize these five elements of great prompts. So let's get started. First things first, let's say the obvious, dumb, and most important thing. The model you use dictates the performance more than any other one of these elements. If you've run a prompt on GPT-40 and then you run that exact same prompt on a smaller, lower class model, Llama 7B, Phi 3, you know that the quality of the output goes down drastically. There's nothing more important when building your prompts than to pick a great model. The model you choose will have the biggest impact on the performance of your prompt, hands down, full stop. Let's go ahead and move on. The purpose is the entire reason you're writing the prompt. It's your goal, it's the target, it's the task. If you write a great, clear goal for your prompt, you will start to get those clear, simple results. After selecting the LLM, the purpose of your prompt becomes the next most important piece. Here we have a super simple prompt with an explicit purpose of generating blog posts about LLMs. Simple enough, right? This is the purpose. Now things get interesting. Let's talk about variables. This prompt has three of the five elements, right? We have the model, we have the purpose, and we have a variable. So not all variables are the same. There are two types of variables, static variables and dynamic variables. We'll discuss static variables in a moment, but this here is a dynamic variable. Dynamic variables are variables that you're going to want to update when you're reusing your prompts in an ad hoc way. So for instance, here we can replace this with LLMs and rerun this, and we'll get another result out. We can update it again, we'll say AI agents, rerun, and you know, whatever, TypeScript versus JavaScript, right? We can go on and on here and reuse this prompt. The key value that variables offer you is that they allow you to reuse your prompts and you can use code to update your prompts in production environments. The big kicker here is if you're building AI agents or agentic workflows, you know that you need variables in order to chain together the outputs of prompts into the inputs of your next prompts. We'll talk about that more when we get to output. Let's go ahead and move on to our next element, examples. So the fourth most important part of your prompt is to include concrete example. Let's go ahead and walk through this and clarify what everything is. So we have the purpose at the top, we have our dynamic variable here, and then at the bottom here, we have um, a bunch of examples, right? So you can see here, this is a prompt that helps us generate new Python functions. And let's just go ahead and generate something. We'll say place string start end, and I want to pass in a string, and then we'll have start match and match. And that's gonna give back a string, right? So doing a little bit of AI code prompting there by writing out the uh, function definition, right? So go ahead and kick that off while we discuss this, right? So examples are really, really important. You can see here that with examples, we're able to specify how exactly we want our output to look in the response of our prompt. Examples tie really closely to output, which we'll look at in a second. But you know, if we go ahead and remove our examples and we'll remove the reference to our examples and we rerun this, you'll see we get a very different output, right? Even with the best model, if you don't tell the model exactly what you're looking for, it can't give it to you, right? So in this case, it's giving us example usage, it's giving us an entire explanation, and you know, this is great, but when we're writing prompts, 
that go right into the model in a non-chat conversation interface. We want to get our exact output structure. And the best way to get that is to use examples to tell the model exactly what you're looking for, right? So if we throw those back in there, we rerun this, you can see once again, we get that exact result. Examples are really important because we can come in here and update this, right? We can add a, a function comment and just specify exactly what we want, right? So detailed about function, right? We can come in here, copy this, make sure all the examples have the exact same format and take this off, colorize that and then we can rerun our prompt, right? And of course, we're going to get exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna get this function now with a really clean comment. Um, and it actually improved the code a little bit because we forced it to explain itself a little bit above. So really interesting stuff. That's the power of examples. And like I mentioned, examples tie really, really closely to output. Let's talk about the output. So let me go ahead and just label this. We have the purpose. We have a dynamic variable here, and then we have an example output here, right? We have the example structure. Prompt output typically comes in two forms. You can output text or you can output JSON like we are here, right? So let me just go ahead and kick that off. And you can see here, we specified the exact structure and our awesome GPT-4.0 model created the output in the exact form we were looking for. Why is this important? Text output is default, it's straightforward, it's useful for simpler tasks, but when you're starting to chain together your outputs and you want more reliable, consistent outputs from your prompts, JSON is the way to go. JSON outputs enable structured and reliable outputs, which is crucial for building the higher order systems like prompt chains, AI agents, and agentic workflows. Also, if it's not clear, function calling is essentially JSON output with a couple additional wrappers on top. When you make a request with a function tool, you get back the function name and you get back the parameters. You can fully replace function calling with JSON outputs because, well, that's exactly what it is. So these are the five most important elements of the prompt. So we can come in here and update the topic. Let's go ahead and say, you know, we had that TypeScript uh, versus uh, JavaScript. Let's go ahead and just rerun that. And you can see here, it's gonna generate a new blog post with all this information. And it's got the SEO keywords in there. We have the hook with all these five elements with variables, with some example structure here by specifying the JSON output, right? By using every one of these elements, we can create concise high output prompts that are very, very reusable. This is why variables are number three, right? It's really, really important to be able to swap in and out values of your prompt. Then it's also important to have examples to specify the exact format. And then last but not least, element five, we have output, right? It's really important to have the option to use a raw text output versus JSON output, right? Which will give you really, really structured outputs that you can use to chain together your prompts. And we've talked about this on the channel before, but if it's not super clear, this is how your prompts start working together to build prompt chains. Your outputs of your previous prompts become the inputs to the variables of your new prompt. And if you've been with the channel for a bit, if you remember our Asian OS video, we looked at this very exact example. You can see here that we can create composability between agent one and agent two by chaining together these agents, right? By taking the outputs from agent one inside the LPU and then using that as the input for agent two, right? So everything comes full circle here. This is what we're building up to, being able to control your prompt and build valuable prompts quickly with these five elements can help you get to that composability step faster. And it helps you have a really dialed in way to create this composability between your prompts, right? It all starts with the prompt, which is why I created this video, which is why I wanna share this with you. These are the five most important elements. If you use these five elements, you will get 80% of the value of writing a really, really high quality prompt with 20% of the effort. You select the model, you clearly define the purpose, make sure it has a single purpose, then you can set up variables to be reused in your prompt in an ad hoc way or with code. Your variables also serve as placeholders for your previous prompts to insert new values. We then have examples, which allow us to build out specifications for what we want the prompt output to look like. And then we have the specific output type, right? So this is our text versus JSON. 
It ties really, really closely to examples because the examples help guide both your text and your JSON output. So these are the five most important elements. This is how we create composability and chain together our prompts. Let's look at a couple concrete examples. So we talked about the OmniComplete on the channel before. I'll link that video. Basically, it's a prompt that takes, you know, somewhere between two and 500 lines of code and puts it all into a single prompt. So what I'll do here is just go ahead and label these sections so it's super clear. At the top, we have our purpose. We then have a static variable here, and then we have dynamic variables down here. So we talked about dynamic variables before. These are variables that will update in an ad hoc way like we're doing right now or via code. And then we have static variables. Static variables are simple. They're basically things that you'll update as you're perfecting your prompt, as you're improving your prompt, right? You'll just come in here and you'll add additional rules. They don't really change outside of the development phase, right? So these are static variables, right? Once you set them, once your prompt is good, you just kind of leave them. The dynamic variables will update over time. These are things that will be populated by your RAG system. These are things that will be populated by, um, you know, again, you coming in here ad hoc or by, you know, replacing it in production systems based on whatever user is logged in or whatever information is going to swap these variables out, right? Let's just go ahead and walk through a simple example here. The topic's gonna to be TypeScript. I'm gonna leave off previous completions and domain knowledge since we can fall back on the LLM here. And then I'm just going to set something up to autocomplete, right? So I'll just say TypeScript is, and then we'll ask for an autocompletion there. And then you can see our system is giving us a bunch of different autocompletes that we could use in our hypothetical dropdown field or our IntelliSense. Let's do a couple more. Our interfaces. And, and we're looking for and types, of course, interchangeable. So you can see here, we're getting some really nice clean autocompletes. Let's go ahead and do one more. Um, let's change the topic. This is why this is an omnicomplete, right? We come in here, we just change the topic. We'll update this to SEO content writing. And then we'll say, how can I, and just, you know, look for auto completions here. So how can I improve my website's search engine ranking? So imagine you have like an FAQ input field. Now your users can come in here, use the OmniComplete prompt. And, you know, just by replacing two variables, you have an entire system here that can help you drive business results here via auto completion. That's a full example with the OmniComplete. You can see we have a clear defined purpose at the top. We have static variables here, and then we have dynamic variables down here. We are using the JSON output. And of course, we're using the top of the line GPT-40 model for the best results. And that gives us a clear, concise, consistent prompt. So let's look at Nuxt Vue.js components as a final example. Let's go ahead and label these. So we have our purpose at the top. We have guidelines. You can see I'm using this kind of guideline pattern again. I find this to be a super useful kind of meta tip. We then have our actual dynamic variable that we'll replace as we reuse this prompt the component request. And then at the bottom here, we have a explicit example of what we want our Vue.js components to look like. I'll come in here, I'll make these, we'll do gray. So you can see, I'm just defining exactly what I want the component to look like. And that's that. So now all we need to do is make a request. Let's say we wanna create a circle progress bar and we'll pass in of course progress and I'll make that an int. Let's do like a gradient, right? So we'll have two color gradients. I'll say blue, red. So I'm doing a little bit of AI coding prompting here by just specifying the component structure that I want to see completed. And so we'll fire this prompt off and the output is going to be a Vue.js component in the structure with the request completed. So really cool stuff. This prompt again is completely reusable thanks to the structure of the prompt. We have the clear guidelines. We have the purpose. We have an exam of what we want the output to be. In this case, we're using just clean text output since we don't need this as JSON. And then we are using a dynamic variable via the component request. And then we're clearly defining exactly what we're looking for here, right? And that's how we get this prompt generating consistent high value outputs, okay? So to recap, these are the five essential elements of high quality prompts. We have the model, purpose, variables, examples, and output. By focusing on these elements, you can achieve 80% of the results with just 20% of the effort. So drop a comment down below if you agree with my top five list. If you have another element that you think is higher priority than you know the variable or the examples or the output or whatever, I'm curious. Definitely let me know what you think. Like I mentioned, I've written thousands of prompts and these are the things that keep coming up that give me the most value in the least amount of time. So I wanted to hop on here and share this with you. When thinking about development in the age of AI and the age of generative AI, 
I think it's always important to focus on the underlying technology that's giving everything its value. And when it comes to the prompt, the model, and then you know these next five elements really serve as the groundwork for the prompt and all of its higher level compositions, right? So once you master the prompt, once you understand the prompt, you can then build great prompt chains, great AI agents, all the way up, right? But it all starts here with the prompt on the base level. Whenever I'm creating new prompts now, this is how I like to structure it, right? First, I choose my model. Then I write a clean, clear, single purpose for the prompt. I then define my variables, both static and dynamic. I'll then add examples to kind of, you know, specify the exact output I'm looking for. And then finally, I'll determine if text output is okay or if I want some really explicit JSON output. If you're building chainable prompts and AI agents and agentic workflows, you'll likely want JSON output for the consistency and the ease of parsing, right? So that's it for this one. Drop a comment, drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Definitely hit the sub if you're not sub. We are on the journey to building agentic software, software that works for us while we sleep. Keep prompting, keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.